Hello, this is David Leibowitz with Philosophical Video Game Philosophy, and I am so excited to f have back Wesley on a thing that we have been talking about for a long time, or at least, well, we have been talking about for a long time, both Fontaine, but even longer, like, to at least just show him, show him the freaking little thing from Nahida's Act 2 quest, so, like, to me, this is all, this is all, this, this, is, this is what was useful from it. So Wesley, um, how about you want to reintroduce yourself for anyone who doesn't know you before? Hello, hello. my name is Wesley. I am uh, the East Asian philosophy specialist. <laughs> yes. All right, let's get started. Yeah. Dancy 不过就算这样，我也不打算改变我的立场，和你产生什么瓜葛。当你也因为无限膨胀的好奇心而殒命的那一刻，我会在心底蔑视与嘲笑你的。你说话真的很难听。我尊重你的选择，也会在将来向你
。即便如此，我也觉得他的疯狂依然在我之上。这就是末日的由来。在这件事上，我承认我被他算计了。我在他的计划里只是最后一道保险。小小的布耶尔，还有你们。继续前进吧，我会保持注目。被天理珍视的生命，究竟能做到何种程度 ？What do you think? You think this is what would usually happen when a dynasty ends and a new dynasty begins? And、mm -hmm. it feels like you're basically talking to a, a like minister of the past. Dynasty, who was so lucky to be living. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. And don't、no, continue.、I'm、just getting the next thing. Um. And I guess. I guess. I guess. How does this relate to what I showed you before? So right. I right before this, I just didn't feel like. Like wanting to take time and just use this to to show another person's video, I'd rather link to that person's video. Ashikai's video on how Celestia sold to that about about the dragons and how they about how like the difference between chi and stuff, chi and and spear veins. Um,、mm -hmm. but like, how does that is any of this relate to to like the war the war of the dragons? Like about about what the I guess should we just continue and see, like what what how how deals with yeah, that? Yeah, let, let's just proceed. Let's just proceed. Now, another catastrophe will soon be upon us. I mourn this turn of events. Huh? Why is it raining all of a sudden? When 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 the dragon cries, it rains. Yes, yes, that's what happens. <laughs> You may be closer to the truth than you think. Oh! Come on, that that voice. That voice is nice. That vo that voice is good. And what are you thinking? It's creaky voice. <laughs> the dragon of、uh, what? Huh? Please do not be so surprised. <sighs> Arena. Nuvalet, Nuvalet, are you listening? Ah, my apologies. We were just guessing randomly. We didn't guess right, did we? You're not actually the Dragon Sovereign of Water, right? Well, if you don't want to confirm or deny, you guessed correctly. I sincerely hope you'll be able to keep this a secret for me. Of course, we'll definitely help you keep it a secret. There's still something Paimon wants to ask you, though. Please go ahead. Well, if you are the Dragon Sovereign of Water, and you are able to force back the Primordial Sea from the fortress, then since Fontaine's prophecy is all about seawater, couldn't you just use your power to solve the crisis? None of the currently living dragon sovereigns in the world, myself included, possess our full dragonhood. They say that when the first usurper arrived on Tivat, they seized a part of the dragon's power. Usurper? Today, that stole. Yeah,、I'm、guessing that's the, someone related to the heavenly principles. I see. Dragon power is the basis of the Archon's authorities. There are seven elemental archons and seven matching dragon sovereigns. The dragon sovereign of water who lived through that era perished a long time ago. As their successor, I know far less of that part of our ancient history. In any case, I believe I will not be able to do much unless the archon disappears and returns their elemental authority to me. Given the status quo, however, I would recommend finding another way to deal with the prophecy. Anything from that? Not yet. 
Okay. Do we? Do, we, do, you, do you, Are you interested in in the water? Do you want to? Let's just. Go, we can go back to the water people if we need to. What's happening with the oratories? I believe it is preparing to carry out the death sentence. shocked expression on your face is just too amusing. I couldn't help myself. You are not Farina. Who are you? Ah, uh, the sweet sound of bewilderment. Marvelous. A sure sign that my attempt to deceive everyone was a resounding success. But to answer your question, I am Fosalor. You know, the god. Fosalor? Why did you deceive us? Oh, that wasn't my goal, of course. Goodness, no. But I had to fool everyone else, too, if I was to stand any chance of deceiving the Heavenly Principles. Deceiving the Heavenly Principles? It's all because of that pernicious prophecy. Dreadful, wasn't it? Everyone doomed to dissolve. Fontaine condemned to be flooded. One was not amused. In fact, one was positively bemused when that problem was thrust upon me by my dearest predecessor. That's the former Hydro Archon Egeria for the uninitiated. It hardly gets more disastrous than a preordained national catastrophe, now does it? She knew full well that the prophecy would surely come to pass. And as one of the seven, she also knew full well that one defies the heavenly principles at one's peril. So yes, as you have no doubt surmised, it was a rather impossible situation that I found myself in. I spent a terribly long time mulling it over, alone on the ocean floor. And I was almost growing barnacles by the time I finally realized there was only one possible solution to this confounding conundrum. I had to outwit the heavenly principles, allow the prophecy to be fulfilled, ostensibly at least, while saving everyone at the same time. <laughs> I'm a genius, I know. I can only assume that's why Egeria chose me as her successor. Although, looking back now, it was hardly the inheritance one dreams of. Between the task of saving the nation, the quotidian duties of the Hydro Archon, and not to mention the original sin of creating a new race of humans, I dare say she left me quite a colossal mess to clean up. <sighs> but one can only play the hand one is dealt. I did not choose this any more than I chose to be one of her Oceanid familiars. So you were also once one of the Oceanids, transformed Oceanid. into a human by Egeria's hand. We'll show you if, if so basically they were a race of, of, ocean, of ocean people that, that longed to oh. be like humans. And ever, the, the, everyone in Fontaine was, is not actually human. I see. I can show you that scene beforehand. I just... But that's that's its own thing. Like that's now we're more like just about we're talking about just heaven itself. Like we're just about what it means to define heaven at the moment, and, and then we'll we can get back to the more, that deeper thing of the Oceanids mm -hmm. about about the Oceanids. Yes, I was. I always dreamed of becoming human, 
And I still do, even now. In my eyes, to be human is to be part of the greatest opera ever known. I think of that. To be human is to be part of, be part of the greatest opera ever known. Hmm. The world is this is I guess guys gonna get to Farina's song in her trailer. It's the world is a stage. Should we yes. I guess we could what do you think about that? Is that does that relate to playfulness? Uh oh yes, of course. And um I think I think she's she's um kind of delineating a um an understanding of the world of reality through the metaphor of um of scenes or 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 stages or opera things like mm -hmm. that and then um also this kind of tells how important the the humanhood is right for for farina to acquire mm -hmm. well this is not farina right? this is this the is, ocean this is, this is fossil uh, fo fossil lore. Fossil lore. Fossil lore. Right. so think about so think about think, just think about it like this jesus right there's a, there's mm -hmm. there's the, there's the god and there's the man. This is the godly mm -hmm. side of Jesus. Farina is the man side of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I see. This is false law. After becoming a god, I separated my divinity from my body and spirit, oh. leaving behind only a self that was as naive and bewildered as my past self on her first day as a human being. The me you see before you now is that divinity. And the human counterpart I left behind, I named Farina. Is this even, in, in a Chinese system? Is, is, is there a way, would there be a way to do that? Or is this very Christian? Um, is this completely um, Christian? Let me think about it. Uh, I know that there are certain fox monsters, fox demons that could do that. That they would leave their, they would like kind of separate themselves and leave a human body behind, like a human mm -hmm. living identity where their demonhood is retained in a separate body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, for for Taoist for Tao Taoist uh, people, there's there's the uh, most important god. Uh, within the Taoist society, who kind of separated him into three parts, and each represents an element, like a, uh, uh, I think one for knowledge, the other for peace, and the last one for treasure or material. So, or like so I, I guess the I guess the question is, I wonder what is the, what does water? Say? I guess should we wait for this to talk about like the, what is the significance of water for the Chinese? We talk, wait for that. Yeah, let's, like, let's yeah, let's save save that for later because it has so joy. many implications. Mm -hmm. Sorrow and everything in between. She could be as vain and conceited, or as meek and vulnerable as she wished. Her strengths were of a kind only a human could possess, as were her shortcomings. But in my eyes. Farina's humanity was what made her perfect. She was perfectly human in every way. The person I always wanted to be. Anyway, so then I cursed her. <laughs> All part of the plan, of course. The plan to deceive the heavenly principles. <sighs> Do you still remember the final scene of the prophecy? The Hydra Archon, alone, weeping on her throne. In order that the prophecy might appear fulfilled, I invited Farina to be an actress, to play the part of the Hydra Archon in the prophecy. Under the curse I placed on her, so long as I, Fosalor's divinity, continued to exist, she could not die. But nor was she free to live her life in the pursuit of happiness. Instead, she was forced to take the stage in the Opera House, to embrace the role of leading lady, to forever play the part of the god from the prophecy, all to create a deceitful appearance of that prophecy coming to pass. Isn't that kind of Chinese? 
not 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 what's not what's going on, but the idea of sac. I mean, we you know about the actual sacrifice, which is I mean everywhere, but like the fact that I mean it's sort. I mean it's it's definitely seen as sad, but also the fact that that she that she's doing a good thing by adhering to her divine self. Like when the chair's like, oh, you're being forced to do something. Like that's okay. Yeah. So um, we always come into the choice uh, um, of uh, choosing justice or choosing life, right? And that's uh, we we do have like a uh, philosophical passage for that from Mengzi, that um, between justice and life, you would select um, justice between fish and uh, beers uh, and uh, a palm of a bear you would choose the palm of a bear right you you can't choose both you have to choose you can only choose one and you have to choose one what so, is the meaning of justice i guess we should be with the meaning what justice is to the chinese is it, oh, this is all about justice um, it's 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 more about um I think it's almost tantamount to our uh, collective um, moral intuitions, right? Or or our most sincere uh, hopes in in politics mm-hmm. right, that we call justice, right? For example, it, uh, between um, heavy taxation uh, or prosperity and um, livelihood for people. We would choose the livelihood for people. That's why vigilantism existed in China, right? Mm. Yes. I suppose now you probably understand why your court is called the Opera Epicles. But for it has Epicles? Only I don't know what it means. <laughs> okay. The, the point. The point is opera part. Is the opera part? Mm-hmm. Right. Isn't she? Even though she is ha- yeah, basically the the trial, the place where the trials exist is also where op where, where performances are held. I see. That's interesting. For like, had a long life. Her mind is no stronger than that of any other ordinary human being. I cannot begin to fathom what she has had to endure. I, now I can it hear must you. Have been torture for her. It has indeed. Can you hear me? I can't no, hear I him. Can. Yes. Okay. I, 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 could you, could I, you I hear me? Hear could you... And although she is... is only human, isn't she? Even though she has had a long life, her mind is no stronger than that of any other ordinary human being. I cannot begin to fathom what she has had to endure. It must have been torture for her. It has indeed. And although she is, in a sense, me in human form, I most definitely owe her an apology for it. It's been 500 years, and all along, she's been playing her part in the most unimaginably long, unbearably lonely, and agonizingly painful opera of all time. So even Farina doesn't know the truth? You've never once let her in on the full plan? Yes, it had to be done. To deceive the heavenly principles, you must first deceive yourself. She did very well. If she had let her resolve falter even once in these five centuries, Fontaine would have been doomed to the most tragic fate. It seems that trusting humanity was the right decision after all. I believe that I understand how your deception works, but that is only half the truth, is it not? How would you build on this foundation to save the people of Fontaine? That is the most important thing. Ah, good, good. Of course, the Udex of Fontaine has pinpointed the crux of the issue. I'm sure you've long sensed that the Oratrice is no simple machine, yes? I've always suspected that it had its own consciousness. And Linny did mention that he heard a human voice within the core chamber. 
It now seems that that person was you, hidden within the machine all along. Am I right? And then I became one with the Oratrice, taking Fontaine's Gnosis with me. Yes, it would seem so, wouldn't it? Alas, your understanding of this device still lacks sufficient depth. In truth, it is no enactor of justice. It is, in fact, a device created to kill the God of Justice. I beg your pardon? Oh, you have it. And to be more precise, not only will the Oratrice take down the God of Justice, it will also take down the Divine Throne upon which she has been placed. <laughs> I mean, did you think I would be the sort to enjoy peaceful repose while Farina suffered? My work over these last 500 years has been to constantly accumulate indemnidium within the Oratrice. But really, some have already discovered that only a small fraction of the energy generated by the device was ever used to provide power to Fontaine. The vast majority has been, had to be, accumulated to enact this death sentence. It was all a part of your plan then, both the trial and the sentence. Indeed. This power, accrued over five centuries, could have sustained Fontanians for millennia had it only been used for that purpose. Almost all of it has now been stored within the Oratrice. But only power of this magnitude could hope to destroy the Hydro Archon's divine throne, shaking the rules established by Celestia and breaking through the institution that is the Seven. So the Oratrice's call for death was for neither Farina nor Fosalor, but for the Hydro Archon. The destruction of that divine throne. If I do not misunderstand your intent, you must be... Returning what's rightfully yours to you, of course. In other words, this was all done to return the authority of the Hydro Archon to the Hydro Dragon of this planet. But... No, oh, what? Getting sad again, are we? The authority of the ancient dragons shall soon be yours once more, O oh Hydro Dragon Sovereign. And this is the face you make. <laughs> All you've done throughout the years is just so you can sacrifice yourself at the very end. I've never quite seen it that way, you know. Even now, I'm quite pleased at how well my deception worked. <laughs> Hydro Dragon, Hydro Dragon, don't cry. I must say, had it been within my rights, I would have loved to judge the heavenly principles themselves. Were they not guilty of essentially the same crime? Egeria stole the power of the primordial sea, and the heavenly principles stole the power you ancient dragons possessed. I, for my part, am the god of justice, and is it not just that your original powers should be returned to you? Speaking of justice, I have always believed that justice lies in the process of pursuing human existence itself. What do you think about that? Wow. <laughs> I feel sad. Oh. The process of pursuing human existence itself. Yeah. There's justice. Yeah. Well, justice, of course, is inherently political. 
Mm. But then how do we make a connection to the metaphor of becoming a uh, human through achieving justice or through pursuing justice um, from non-human identity? We, I guess, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously, of course, I mean, I'm not there about, about the justice as to pursue our animal nature. But I think becoming human is, I, th I think it's away from uh, from me being mechanical, but also from, I don't say this, it's justice, I mean, justice lies in, 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 in the existence of, of, of people, I mean, in, in the, the, this, in, in saying yes to life. Mm. That is justice, when, when we accept what we are, and don't run away from it. Mm. Ex 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 except that again, this I get where Cooper had issues because again, I sh we're doing this partially because again, I was disappointed by what Coop uh, Cooper's reaction. Because <laughs> Cooper was just like, "Oh yeah, this is this is oh yeah these 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 water people turning into humans. That's just like AI becoming human. Like, do you do you well, feel like that's if, um, no no you don't feel like that? No, I I, I don't think so. I I think. Like even us, <laughs> we're we're trying to become human uh, through achieving justice, right? We're we're trying to uh, gain that level of freedom, autonomy, uh, justice, or liberation through through political endeavors. Uh, yeah. It's not the same as gaining gnosis or gaining like uh, cognitive capacities and emotionally connectedness, uh, from an automated machine to a being that's similar, oh, that's more similar to human, you know, to, to humanity. So if the theft of the primordial sea's might was Fontaine's original sin, then leaving matters of procedural right and wrong aside, the descent of the Fontanians as humans and their right to exist in this world would be Fontaine's original justice. In other words, existence was Egeria's justice. And to me, justice is the continuation of that existence. Defying the prophecy and ensuring that Fontaine's people shall live on. That should be the justice enthroned over all others. At this point, we, whether it be myself or all other Fontanians, have shouldered the burden of this sin for far too long. Eudex Nervillette, the highest judge in our land, when you regain your full power as an elemental sovereign, what verdict shall you pass upon us? So when I was invited to the court of Fontaine to serve as Eudex, I see now that that was your idea too. At last, I now understand the true purpose behind this position. In the beginning, I was uninterested in human existence. But these five centuries of living alongside them have gradually brought about mutual understanding between us. And I have even attempted to feel as they feel. You are a devious one, Fosalor. Things being as they are, surely you know that I could never declare them to be guilty. Here's the big scene. <sighs> the hour of my execution is almost here. For the sinner, the curtain call has come. I know I may not sound it, but faced with death, I find myself a little afraid. Perhaps this is one thing both gods and humans have in common. This, this is everything. <laughs> Farewell, Nervalette. I hope you've enjoyed the part you played these 500 years. He's dancing. It's the playful sacrifice I was talking about.
Thank you, Farina, for all you've done. From this moment on, please live happily as a human, just as I wish we could. Hereby declare, people of Fontaine, your sins are forgiven. What do you think? I actually think we probably should go to more when we get to Farina part, as opposed to... I, I could show you the scene where, like, you see Farina's backstory and, like, how she basically had to play the part, but I think I actually just want to have it where she tells it herself during her story quest. I think that's a very good scene. It's, I mean, it's my favorite story quest in the whole game, so... It's not just because of the musical part. You need to unmute. But I guess... This, so this, this, is, this is all for the dragons. Like, I mean, yes, inclu sir. so in included with what I showed you of the power of chi and stuff, what's going on? What the hell is going on? I, I didn't notice much from the Chinese perspective or East Asian perspective, but I realized that they are dealing with a liberation of philosophy or a philosophy of liberation mm -hmm. instead, right? Um, Can you tell us about it? Yeah. Right, they're seeking for, uh, for for granting all um, humans or all oceans a a level of um, liberation where they can uh, be themselves or becoming uh, themselves. Right, uh, in terms of freedom, in terms of um, uh, like willingness and things like that, and. Um, it feels like uh, the whole scene or the whole deception was a project to come up with or to generate that liberation philosophy to, to create an, uh, a precedent for, uh, for liberation, even through um, death or through a playful sacrifice, that you would say. Do you, do you believe that? I mean, I think we should more, when we get to the song, we'll end with that. Um, but, mm -hmm. but, um, right, right. And I also want to address a little bit on existential mattering. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, of course. Men, Penn's philosophy. Yes. 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 So th that's a project that I've been working on as well. Um, in, in our conceptions, there's three kinds of, uh, existential mattering. The first kind is, uh, what every, everybody would hope for, right? The most idealist kind, which, which would be altruism, right? You want to be altruistic, right? Your existence is centered upon the notion of, of uh, helping others. Through helping others, you are basically helping yourself, but you don't hope for uh, helping yourself as the result or as a reward. You just want to help others, right? That's that's a kind of existential matter. Uh, uh, the other end is what we call malevolent mattering, where your uh, perception or phenomenological sense of uh, of mattering is centered upon um, making bad things, right? Doing bad things, such as like what Hitler has been doing, right? You wanted to fight for uh, your identity through damaging other parties. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and there's, of course, the third kind, uh, which is the gray area, what we call moderate mattering, where uh, you are kind of in the middle of you, you have some, some kind of altruistic thoughts. But uh, when doing it, you also engage in some light or contradicting um, sense of malevolence, right? So I think what uh, Fosselor has been doing would be um, 
somewhere in the middle, maybe leaning more towards uh, altruistic mattering. Mm -hmm. Still, um, uh, it wow, well, it's complicated. <laughs> so, 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 tell me about. Tell me, you were saying that that regarding he being at war with heaven, right? That's what happens mm -hmm. in Journey to the West. Yes, so Journey to the West is though though it seems that in the on the surface or in a superficial level it's pro Buddhist Buddhism and anti Taoism, right? Because the heaven represents Taoism and the Buddha, which is where the story begins and end, kind of um, uh, is all around uh, Buddhism, right? Or or Buddha, right? So um, the tricky Art is that uh, uh, what the author is trying to communicate is that all religion are the same. Like they, they're they're all terrible. They're all malevolent in it, in their beings, right? Mm -hmm. Because they all wanted to. Um, uh, they they basically fight for a certain kind of value, like not in the sense of like spiritual value or spiritual quality kind of sense, but like concrete. Uh, value like life, longevity, like m uh, economic flourishing, th th mm -hmm. those kind of things, very concrete, very mundane, instead of holy or divine. Right? And do you Whereas, see any of that in this? Do you see any of that in this story? Maybe a little bit, if, but but it, it, I still feel that what they're asking for is something more abstract rather than concrete, right? What what uh, they have been fighting for, or like uh, they they really came up with that whole deception and like two times of sacrifices, right? So all of these are uh, are are leading towards a, a project of liberation instead of mm. a project of manipulation, right? Mm. So that's yeah, that's on its core very different. But I, I guess regarding a a czar, like that that was the more anti-religion, where like the the scholars were like. The scholars were very like oh, but it was you think it was anti with with with, with Sumeru was anti religion or just anti intellectualism? Oh, I think Sumeru is more more um, intellectualistic, mm -hmm. if that's a word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, mm -hmm. and I feel like there was something pro religion about that. I mean, at least pro yes. pers personal religion. Religion. Oh, well, I don't think it will be about religion, but rather Spiritual about spirituality. Yes. yes. When they're when, when they kind of um, attain a, or attune to a kind of awareness to reality that they're connected to the enmity of all beings. Mm -hmm. right? that's yeah. Kind of, and I guess how do, how, do you, how, do you, how do you how do you how do you see? And but here it's about exist. Get away from the divine. The divine sacrifices itself for a human, which is obviously, I mean, that's the Nietzschean death of God, in a sense. Mm. But the question is, how do how do we live on with God? How do we live on with God with, with, without without the God that we had? And uh, I mean, the, I guess the answer is partially laughter, which is what we'll get it at. Yes. So I I think this relates to Kierkegaard. Yes, that we have we have three level of like awareness or three level of um, um, I forgot his exact words, but uh, the first the first level is intellectualism, where you can kind of see things. You 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 have this literacy of uh, noticing uh, things going on and things like that, right? And the second level is um, live by religion, right? Where you can. Uh, feel connected to certain uh, like not partisan but certain narrative certain uh, uh, like it's hard to explain like it feels like you're subscribing to a narrative while you uh, you're like uh, believing deeply into the narrative and to use that as the basis for understanding the world. And mm -hmm. the third kind is aesthetic, right? You live by aestheticism instead of um, um, intellectualism or, or religion, right? Mm -hmm. Where you can 
become something different. You can like actualize yourself through certain aestheticism. Yeah, and I feel like, I mean, I, it feels like to me. I think I, I against Cooper. I feel like this is very pro body in a sense. I mean, it's not pro the body they originally had, but it's pro like instead of giving yourself like a separation of the body and the soul, and like becoming one. It's like no, I want to have my body. I want to accept my body. Mm. Yeah. I guess. What do you think about that sacrifice versus the Ruka Devada sacrifice? Is that I, I still. I. I mean. I think the scene is maybe slightly more impactful, but I think. But I still think like the Sumeru scene is the most powerful scene in the game. Is that more? That's yeah. The most, but the, yeah, the Sumeru one is definitely more impactful. Um, both of them are kind of silent, right? Um, it, it's like a what perlocution? No, elocutionary silencing, <laughs> where their ideas, uh, or, or I mean, like their 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 deeds are not seen. Like I, 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 I yeah, it's, but I guess what's the difference between the forgetting of a god is the forgetting versus the literal ending of of godhood itself? Like what I guess is there a difference? I mean, there's a difference, I feel like. Yeah, of course, of course, there's a difference, but it's it just, it's just so different, right? I mean, I mean for, in a, in a, for in a sense, Devada, yeah, yeah. For Ruka Devada, her death is both both existential and social, right? Both within its, uh, within herself, and and uh, and in a broader sense that. Uh, in the broader sense of her social existence, right? Uh, right. Both are are gone. But for uh, Fosalor and Farina, what they're doing is different. Feels like they're just ending the godhood on its own and are re returning or like uh, granting a um, identity of humanhood, right? Yeah. To give, to give, to allow Farina to finally be as a human, right? Yes. So I guess yes. now you're just getting at what what Farina is like finally now that she's been granted her humanhood. I, I think so, right? As Fosolo says in the in the very no 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 no. I'm, I'm saying, are you are you are you now ready to see what she uh, how she lives oh, as a human? Oh yes 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 please. A mere musical is well within my capabilities, but given the present circumstances. I'm afraid I must regretfully decline your casting request. How come? It sounds like this would be a breeze for you. True, but I have made a decision to retire from the stage. Although I am no longer required to play the role of the Hydro Archon, the time I spent inhabiting that character has left an indelible mark on me. Centuries of pretending to be a different person changes you completely. I'm not the same person I once was. Of course, that can't be undone now. It's too late, and I have no intention of reinventing myself all over again. But at least I can say that I no longer desire to play any new roles. Uh, Paimon can understand, but this is just a one-off part to fill in for someone who's sick. Surely that's okay. Whether it's a one-off or not, it's a boundary that I've committed to no longer cross. What do you think about that? So, um, I, I didn't finish the sentence. What? What, what, do you, what? what did she say? It's a boundary that I've committed to no longer cross. Right, so she, she gave up staging or performing. That's very yes. different from the past, right? Yes. I think she's about to explain why, though. If I make an exception to the rule now, I'm just leaving a back door for myself, which would be the same as not having a boundary in the first place. So I'm not going to perform, and that is that. Okay, guess there's no convincing you. Well, is there anything else we can do to help out the troop? Otherwise, they'll just have to disband without any fanfare. Things are slowly but surely falling apart. Me, 
I think all emotion shall ultimately return home to the heart, and slowly settle with the passage of time. Take, par exemple, how this troop pines for their late director. Things such as this I have never witnessed before. And so yeah, actually I actually go back a little bit. and do nothing. Uh, Farina? I know what you're thinking, but I by no means plan to cross the boundary I've set for myself. Besides, they're no longer looking for a replacement anyway. If the, the sick actress uh, comes back. I can, however, provide some artistic guidance from the vantage point of a highly experienced audience member. But only if you feel this is something that would help, of course. Oh, most definitely. We'll take any guidance that you can give. We unfortunately don't have any budget for a consultant, though. Will that be a problem? I don't need any compensation. All I'd ask in return, if you're willing, is that you tell me some more about the life and work of your late director. Something I've begun to realize since my departure from the Opera Epicles is that there's a lot you don't see when you observe everything from on high. The law only judges criminal behavior and does not weigh human emotion. The court's verdict can settle the question of criminal liability, but... What about all the unresolved emotions of the parties involved? What happens to them? An interesting answer. But if you ask me, I think all emotions shall ultimately return home to the heart, and slowly settle with the passage of time. Take, par exemple, how this troop pines for their late director. Things such as this I have never witnessed before. And so I should like to observe, perchance to understand. Paimon is a yeah is, is I, I I honestly don't care as much about this I'm, I'm fine I was kind of fine originally but yeah the more I realized Paimon is really mean in this quest people <laughs> okay. really actually actually kind of now kind of want to switch switch it to Chinese because apparently in Chinese she's much nicer Oh. Um, but now, nah, nah, let's let's suffer through English because <laughs> I mean Am because Amber's performance is so good. Mm. Uh, Amber's, um, but I get yeah. What do you think about that? About the idea of about being able? Because I mean, she's has she's been freaking like like pampered her whole life, even though she hated it, uh, and she mm. never got to really observe people. She was always this big celebrity. Yeah, yeah, she was always on the stage. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, yes, and um, and now, now she's she's like a vantage, <laughs> experienced vantage. Mm. It's, I think. Oh, does this speak to the liberation, like the post-liberation life, like where she gets to choose for herself? She gets to humanize herself. Instead of living, living in, uh, like instead of playing a part for a certain script or certain narrative. Yes. So breaking free from, uh, from narrative and setting boundaries for herself to not uh, engage with any like, set narratives uh, or set scripts are, um, are kind of her. Uh, her embodied agency to become herself, find herself, right? So that's humanizing, right? Finding when you're finding yourself, when you're thinking of thinking uh, in a meta perspective for like what uh, your yourself would represent or uh, be identified as would kind of make make you human. Mm. Side of you. Great. Well, I appreciate your company, so please don't disappear just yet. I don't know whether you can tell, but the years of suffering and loneliness aren't the only reason I have a hard time facing up to who I used to be. As I stand here by the ship, I can't get the images of the rising water out of my mind. One after another. People were taken by the water. There was a, there were, a bunch of people died, got got turned in Poisson, so everyone hates her, and Poisson freaking hates her. All those treasured lives and memories, 
washed out of existence in an instant. They thought their god would protect them. They had absolute faith that when disaster struck, a divine power would save them from harm. And all the while, I played my part to perfection to convince them that was true. But then the floodwaters finally came, and the Hydro Archon did nothing. You shouldn't look at it like that. You are only doing your duty. I've had to go through so many moments like that for the sake of protecting the truth. As time went on, it got harder and harder to bear, and I became more lonely and isolated. Eventually, I realized I had nothing left except the truth. I became terrified of completely failing in my task, and was haunted by the thought of being left all alone, weeping on my throne. Fortunately, we were able to avoid the worst case scenario thanks to the help of heroic individuals such as yourselves. Everyone rose to their responsibilities, and I finally regained my freedom. But on some level, freedom also means no longer being needed. I have no further use to people. Hmm. Lima would have never imagined you'd see it that way. A reward? I guess so. And back then, I didn't even dare to dream about having someone to confide in. I was scared of someone mute? recognizing me for who I truly was, and exposing the secret I swore to protect. Believe in the Farina you see on stage. She is the one you can trust. I had to keep all my feelings, all my curiosity about life to myself. No one could be allowed to know. That's what I really meant when I said I'm no good at maintaining relationships. So that's where you were coming from. Paimon totally thought you were just a bit of a diva at heart. Could you please get off my case? I don't know what's gotten into you today. I'm making an effort here. You could at least try to do the same. <sighs> I do. I once had nothing but the truth, and now I'm finally <laughs> free to live my own life again. And even though I have no idea where I'm going right now, at least the choice is in my hands. All right, it's about time to. I think, I think she's confused on what she can become. So on the search of self, what's really important is the clarity and the metacognition of oneself, right? And she right now doesn't have that. She she couldn't see the. She couldn't see the potential for herself. I think this is really similar to what From explains in escaping uh, freedom. Freedom, yes, escaping freedom. That um, when we are finally free from all kinds of authority and we are unbounded by religion or uh, or, or grand narratives. Uh, we we're no longer controlled by them, but at the same time, we're not guided by them either. Either right? we we, yeah. we are feeling lost, confused, uh, unguided, um, and empty, right? Mm. In in our hearts. So that's mm. the new kind of freedom, uh, the, the the active kind of freedom that uh, we are afraid of, right? Through. Well, maybe we gained freedom of speech, and then we realize that we don't really have the capacity to think for ourselves. We don't really have the capacity for um, independent thinking, right? So I think Farina is experiencing something similar, that in the past she is this 
someone who's glorious on the stage and who's someone to trust. But then um, she broke free from that identity and uh, kind of rendered in this lacuna of explanation for herself, right? She is confused for what to become, how to become, and uh, what is she, right? Mm. Yeah. Self. And after that lecture you gave me about not looking after my health. I'm sorry. I've let everyone down. You... How do I log in? I, I do have premium. This is a conversation for another time. How can the show go on without its... Are, are you watching an ad? No, no, I just skipped the, the ad. Star performer. Uh, Miss Farina? I'd like to make a request of you. Say no more. If you're sick, you need to rest. I know what you're going to ask. Loic, your character has no more scenes, correct? Oh, uh, yeah. I think my scenes are all done. Although, I do have one more line. But I guess another guy in the troupe with a similar voice register could take it. Why? Please take Dolphy back to her place to rest. I'll sing the finale. He crosses the line. Yeah. So that I don't know. I, this is pulled. I, I like it as I mean, that's because I'm before I, because I'm not a re, I'm not a retired performer. I think it's good to be able to find playfulness in yourself. But I know others like don't like some people don't like this like that she does this. Um. So when you when you think about boundaries, when you think about boundaries set for yourself, um, aren't you creating a meta narrative already? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and breaking out from any narrative will lead to liberation. Mm. It, it just in this process, it takes cognitive uh, courage and humility. Right? You don't want to you, you don't want to say that a decision that that's made in the past would certainly uh, guarantee a freedom in the future. Right. Um, everything is in moderation. You have to see what's what's fitting the moment, right? So, mm. so she does cross the line, but I don't think she's crossing the line for retaining in a state of freedom. From the sublime to the ridiculous. After all that, everything's come full circle. Thank you, Miss Farina. I'm so sorry to put you in this position after everything you said. Never mind. What's done is done. It's really my own fault for getting in too deep. <laughs> no one likes regrets. Myself included. Leave it to me. I've watched you rehearse so many times that I've learned Cleo's part by heart. I do not doubt your acting skills, but please allow me to ask just one more question. After all... This show is dedicated to the life and legacy of our director. What, in your opinion, is the reason Cleo shines so brightly? It's her pure heart. Despite all the pain and loneliness she had to endure, she never once stopped believing in the beauty in this world. Well said. I leave Director O'Reilly in your hands. Shown you this before, but but been a while. Is she here yet? Will she get here? She's not coming. You're wrong. She's here.
your wish. My... wish? If you become human, you can reveal your secret to no one. You will face suffering and loneliness. Is this truly what you want? bad that I had to break the one clear rule I'd managed to make for myself, even mm. if I had no choice. Still, I have to admit that, despite everything, it felt good to be back on the stage again. Yes, to do something within her disposition. Mm -hmm. to, Isn't this a little shiny? Kind of Isn't this Chinese and I'm like okay, well you don't want you don't want to do it, but it's good for for the world that you do this, or or do you feel like she does actually enjoy it, or or I think she does matter, enjoy not it not for responsibility but just for personal enjoyment. Like, mm -hmm. Not you don't think it's like it's well, not... well, well, being stripped from the from the identity in the past kind of also uh purified her herself to be free of all kinds of responsibility that's imposed upon her right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she can she can just be herself now she can enjoy s singing or 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 being on a stage just for the sake of being on a stage right she's 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 having a wholehearted experience yes um, on that, that so that she's able to re understand and experience and loving the beauty in this world. Did you say that relates to playfulness? Yes. yes, yes, it's all about playfulness, right? Tell us about courage, more about courage, yes, because because she's breaking free from uh, from the 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 old identity, right? The identity that no longer works anymore, right? And she's she's finding meaning through um. Th th through the process of find, uh, finding herself, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, during this process, she did something that's that's opposite than what she originally wished for, but still did it anyways for for just the pure enjoyment instead of any other like complicated um, obligations or things like that. Mm -hmm. Finally. We would like to give a special thanks to our artistic consultant and event coordinator, Miss Farina. Hey, that's not what we agreed on. Oh, <laughs> so it was Farina after all. She's back. Uh, honestly, what is he doing? He should have run that by me first. Uh, whoops. <laughs> all right, calm down. Don't be mad. This was a group decision. We just didn't want your contributions to go unacknowledged. After all, it's been the rule in Fontaine since ancient times that everyone's work, visible or invisible, is equally deserving of recognition. Oh, look at that! Wow! That's great! Yeah. Yes, I know the rule, but... But... Uh, it should still be applied on a case-by-case -case basis! I wasn't ready for this yet. Ah, uh, it's no big deal. What's the worst that could happen? 
Oh, yeah? Well, since you think it's so easy, <laughs> you can sign them for me. This is a great chat and all, but can we talk about that crazy thing that happened during the show? It nearly gave Paimon a heart attack. Paimon flew over to where she was supposed to be and was about to drop the prop vision, and then suddenly, a real one popped out of thin air! Oh, uh, that... <laughs> I've got no oh. idea what happened there either. But hey, it worked pretty well, didn't it? I'll bet the audience has never seen such a realistic prop. Wait, what about Dolphy? I wonder how she's doing. Oh, um, let's go check on her as soon as we finish clearing the stage. Yes. Tomorrow morning! That's wonderful. I'm so sorry I failed to see it. As well. What about you, Miss Farina? Any future plans? Well, frankly, I think a return to obscurity is no longer an option for me. I'm sure a slew of consultancy requests will hound me wherever I go until I finally acquiesce. You rather sealed my fate there with your special thanks at the end of the show. Sorry. It's quite all right. No need to apologize. What I meant to say is that this whole experience has shown me that perhaps I'm not as averse to a return to the stage as I'd previously imagined. Maybe Nervilette was right. Maybe Cleo is the right role for me. Mm. You know that? Yes, right? It, it, it's exactly what I have said. She will... She will... She will... She she did what she had to do, and then she she was doing something that she deeply enjoyed, and now she realized that enjoyment for herself. Mm -hmm. It's good. I still don't wish to pretend to be yeah. someone else. No, oh, oh yeah, one one more thing, one more thing. I I think I think she completed that uh, action for for finding active freedom mm -hmm. instead of just passive freedom mm -hmm. of a desire to express myself so maybe the show will go on for me after all yeah there was once a time when i was an actress in a masquerade seeking only to hide the truth but from now on i want to spend my time learning real stories about real people and how they touch the lives of others around them. I want to watch them blossom and wither, see them refined on the page, retold on the stage, and remembered long into the future. I'm sure this is what captivated director O'Reilly as well. Sounds like you're ready to stop running from your true calling. The more you get out into the world, the more you'll discover what a fascinating place it is. <laughs> then it's a deal. If a vision is a gift from the gods, then I should do my best to honor it. That doesn't seem as anti religion right there. Oh, anti religion. Uh, what? Well, I don't think it's anti religion. Well, I, uh, it's not pro religion either. No. I wonder I wonder if it I wonder if it, if it has I wonder if it's gonna show there's one little line if you talk to her afterwards good wait is it gonna is it good good it's good ironic to think that in my whole time as a god I could only ever dream of receiving this kind of power and now that the gods have given me their blessing it actually feels more like I'm finally able to take my fate in my own hands is is that how humans feel about it as well? Yes, to to be. Wow. To be. What do you what do you think about that? Was it Herschel who who said that? Uh, who who said as his last word to his disciples that at the core of existentialism is just go ahead and create 
<laughs> and I think what what Farina says at the la- uh, at last was was just echoing that. Notion. Do you want to see the whole character demo? I've showed this you this before, or do you want to just focus on the lyrics at the end? Because then I have to be a different video. Oh, either way, either way, whichever you decide. I get. We'll do both. I guess. I mean, do you remember this demo? If you remember, I'm going to show do something else. Do you remember the demo? Mm, vaguely. <laughs> you love her. You love her. We all love her. Oh my god. So great. That's the best. This is definitely the best demo in Genshin, easily. Yes. So neat. So nice. What? What do you? I guess before Enjoy. we get to the, before we get to the lyrics. I mean, it's basically about laughter. But but what what do you think about like how she's changed? This is this is after everything, right? She has her powers, so yeah. She never had. She never had powers. She just pretended to have powers. She never had them. Oh, she was completely. <laughs> a, she was a normal human mm-hmm. that just had a curse of immortality. Oh, right. When she and, got and her now vision, she has... that, now she has a vision which gives her the water powers and the and the ocean friends. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So, yeah, it does feel like she's more um, untensed, right? She's more unleashed. Uh, in that. And, and, and she's feeling a lot more natural than before. And as I, as I can vaguely remember, uh, she used to act uh, like so much like an actress right when when she's on the stage it feels dramatic but in this sense it feels just she's trying to tell a story she's trying to like share right instead of being on the stage she started to being herself on the stage yes So what? So now we get to my answer about the nature of water, right? Mm-hmm. Right, the nature of water. About mm. water. So can so can there be a playful sacrifice? Like of remember, the, uh, uh, I mean, just so the lyric from from the thing was water puts a dance into our step, right? It puts uh-huh. a it, it puts a dance into our step. Hmm. So can there be a playful sacrifice? For, for water? No, just in general. In general. Do you, do you see uh, like the meaning of a playful sacrifice? I think so. I thought, I thought is it so in, in China, so what I've learned from, is that water is very altruistic. It's very selfless. Yes. Very humble, and uh, we we have so many great sayings about water. Something like the most, uh, the the highest form of benevolence, uh, no further than water, right? Mm-hmm. So, right, and or something like, um, uh, if water goes low, uh, it becomes ocean. Uh, if mm-hmm. human goes low, it becomes a king. Mm-hmm. Right. So we have a lot of sayings about that, uh, but those are mostly about humility. But I think it speaks further to just humility. I think it's also talking about uh, omniscience. Right. It's, it's also talking about uh, visibility, invisibility, kind of dynamic. And it's also talking about um, uh, sacrifice, right? To give out, to give all that you have, to share as much as you can share, and to share as much as you can share, right? Give. Yes. So she's giving back, but she's giving back what she can through her her skill. 
Yes, and also、oh. be receptive to everything, right? This is this is a, a metaphor that、uh, I think the Westerners are very familiar with, right? From Bruce Lee, <laughs> right? He really like water. He thinks that the、uh, that within water resides the highest、uh, energy.、Mm. Right? Because yes, he, be, 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 because he thinks that、um, when you hit a, when when you hit water, it doesn't break; it just、mm. receives everything, right? It changes、yes. its form; it becomes better. Yeah, something like that. So, so I think anti fragility, Talib's、uh, notion of anti fragility, definitely、yeah. informs this this、uh, dynamic. Well, I guess before we we pause. On that, but about so laugh, enjoy the moment. That's all. So she learned to be truly playful, right?、Mm -hmm. Yes. So, is there anything more about like laugh for in the moment? What do you think about that? Laugh it off. Do you have like、yes. connects to understand the beauty of the world? Of your course. Pedagogy of, pedagogy of wonder. Pedagogy of wonder. Yes. Recently, I've been thinking about humor. Like in the pedagogy of wonder, and also in 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 this laughter song, right?、Um, I think the most,、uh, I think our most acquainted、uh, sense of wonder in the as is as is used in the pedagogy of wonder is laughter, right? When we are feeling、uh, humored by something, when 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 we detect.、Uh, um, Some something laughable, right? Something amusing in a in in a special sense. We do feel a connection, right? It's either contrast or novelty or or, or just bizarreness, but、uh, it's a light-hearted kind of thing. It's not about sarcasm, satire, or、uh, those kind of things, but just about connections. Right、mm -hmm. when you are when you are laughing, you are feeling you are drawing a lot more connections than than before you are laughing. Right before you understand that sentence or that、uh, point of humor. Right、mm -hmm. then,、uh, once you understand, once that is understood, you're making a lot of these like antenna of connections to other things. Right, how it's been used and how it's portrayed and. Uh, what other similar analogous things are are connected or 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 like remind or illuminated, right?、Mm -hmm. So,、um, I think uh, humor uh, kind of speaks to the intrinsic quality of contents, but laughter is on how you're responding to it, right?、Mm -hmm. When you're laughing, when you're sincerely laughing.、Uh, You're not worrying about anything,、mm -hmm. right? And in that kind of、uh, unworried peace,、um, you'll find your own existence, right?、Mm -hmm. Your existence is blended with、uh, the enmity of all existences, yes. Right, and that brings us into that wonder state. Right. Can you so, tell us more about wonder, like what, like about how you view what wonder? is wonder. Yes. How I view wonder.、Um, so,、uh, wonder is not just about、uh, seeing something novel or、uh, or seeing something、uh, skillful, right? It's not like when I'm juggling in front of you, you know exactly how I've done it, but uh, uh, you you would feel you would just feel entertained. That's the first kind of wonder,、mm -hmm. which is not the kind that I'm talking about. The second kind of wonder. Is like a curiosity being ignited through academia. Well, for example, if I've done a magic trick right in front of you, and you would wonder about how am I doing it, but that second wonder still is in the wonder that I'm speaking for. The third kind of wonder, however, the wonder、uh, towards aesthetics. Right. For example, if you like Harry Potter, if you watch like、uh, uh, if you if you.、Um, Uh, read Harry Potter for the first time, you would feel, oh, what a what a great world! Like it has so much content, it's so interesting. But you don't really exist in there. You don't have to be Harry Potter. You don't have to be Ron Weasley. You don't have to be any of these characters. 
you don't have to be a god that's omniscient it's just the the awareness of that world of that metaphysical world brings you wonder you you mm-hmm. you feel connected to something that's way larger than than just yourself and just mm-hmm. our existence right you 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 are you suddenly become aware of a different existence while connecting yourself with that without being uh, w- without noticing that connection right it's mm-hmm. just you're experiencing that connection so that's mm-hmm. the third kind of wonder the wonder towards aesthetic uh which is the kind of wonder or that i'm speaking for mm-hmm. or how am i understanding how i am and then, understanding the wonder and then so the so then i guess how does it relate to back to then so water is receptive so to be able to take in everything and sort of sort of yes. give up in a sense give up the ego and allow yourself to take in others lives right yes. and that's yes and i guess that was that sort of relate to why why folks the lord danced yes. when she died well, yes yes so i think this connects to uh the existential and the three kinds of existential mattering that i spoke for right mm-hmm. when you're when you're in altruistic mattering uh you are basically water you receive everything you 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 are everywhere you belong to anything and you can contribute to anything right Mm -hmm. so when you're in that state when you're so receptive so generous so humble so courageous you become yourself even even though you don't care about your existence of self but you become Mm -hmm. yourself right in that profound Mm -hmm. sense in that oh in that in that glorified sense <laughs> is that so that relates to what about the no again the notion that water puts a dance into our step what about that idea oh now i start to to be more appreciative to that sentence right so we are we are finally connected to something so um Water allows us to be playful, be reciprocal. Be, be... Yes, 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 exactly. Do you, is there anything else you want me to show you? I think we're good with this clip. Do you want to see? There is there is a clip in the in the New Year thing where Karina meets Strong Lee. I don't know if there's anything philosophical. It's just a funny interaction. You want to just sure. see that? Do you want to see that? Sure. Or, or do you want to yeah, see that? Sure. All right. She she does not reveal who she. Okay. Which is known for its tea, but you know what else they have with tea? That's right! Oh, Zhongli and Farina! Oh, great, now Paimon shouting too. Oh, well, aren't you a sight for sore eyes? Seems like our luck just keeps on growing. <laughs> that we were able to meet you both without prior arrangement must mean that this is quite the serendipitous meeting indeed. Uh Huh? Oh, so both of you are acquainted with the Traveler and Paimon, then? (laughs) I'm pretty sure you didn't learn that one from me. Ahem, I must admit, I'm a bit surprised to see you here, Traveler. But seeing as you're a hero who's been all over to that, it makes sense that you would be well-traveled and well-connected. Since we have found ourselves in each other's company within this fertile land, allow me to take this opportunity to wish you a happy Lantern Rite. It appears you have been to Fontaine, then. Given your proclivity to spread good deeds wherever you go, it's no surprise that you would make the acquaintance of a celebrity as illustrious and celebrated as Miss Farina. What I mean to say is, you flatter me, Mr. Zhongli. Although I've built up a certain following within Fontaine, it is no reflection of strength or wisdom. I stand before you right now as nothing more than an ordinary traveler in search of beautiful scenery and creative inspiration. There is definitely more to Mr. Zhongli than meets the eye. I could tell as much from our conversation earlier. 
Given his breadth of knowledge on both academic and worldly matters, there's no way he hasn't heard about what happened in Fontaine. Is he just feigning ignorance for my benefit? No, 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 no. Ayah. You're no common tourist. I simply won't have you talk about yourself that way. Huh? Does that mean Hu Tao also knows? You may not have heard, friends, but... Uh, ahem, Miss Hu Tao. Miss Farina is now one of my esteemed clients. Uh, uh, uh. Yep. <laughs> Okay, okay, you win. Hmm, guess Paimon will have to break into the hidden stash at the bottom of her shoe. Uh huh? What's this about winning something? Don't tell me. You two were placing bets on us. Uh, nah oh, we just saw you guys standing on the side of the road and couldn't help but take guesses as to what you were talking about. Oh, I see. That means you, my friend, must have guessed that I was trying to promote my business to Miss Farina. That I do, my friend. What was Paimon's guess then? Paimon thought Zhang Li was showing the newbie around. Ah, by newbie, you mean me, right? <laughs> if that's the case, then Paimon's guess was also correct. That's right. Mr. Zhongli was telling me about some great sightseeing spots in the area. Ha! You see? Paimon was right, too! Since both of our guesses were right, there can't be a winner or a loser. Hey, don't be upset, Traveler. How about this? You buy Paimon a bull, and Paimon will also buy you a bull. As for the third bull... Since I was the subject of the bet, perhaps it should go to me? You know, as a congratulations for the huge deal I just struck. <laughs> I was just joking. Anyway, I should be the one treating you. The funeral parlor is about to bring in quite the sum after all. Oh, Paimon almost forgot to ask about the most important question. Did I... Something happened recently, Farina? Huh? What do you mean? Uh... Well, you know, with you enlisting the services of Wangsheng Funeral Parlor and all. Oh, well, yes. Really? Oh, no. Paimon is so sorry for your loss. Although Paimon may have not known the person, please accept Paimon's deepest... Whoa, 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 it's not like that, Paimon. Since you hired the services of a funeral parlor and all... Hey, it's not that big of a stretch. Really, Paimon? It's not like you don't know me. Do I look like I know anyone who would ask me to coordinate their funeral? <laughs> Miss Hu Tao is simply helping prepare some props for my film. Not too long ago, I read a collection of horror stories from Liyue. The content was spectacular! In fact, I still feel the need to sleep with the light on even now. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's not the point. Now that Fontaine's biggest star has returned to the stage, I figured it's about time the industry enjoyed a breath of fresh air. Hey! <laughs> That's pretty good! I'll have to remember that for my ad posters. <laughs> oh, Paimon sees! That makes a lot of sense. So, did you come to Liyue just to enlist the services of Wangsheng Funeral Parlor? Well, not exactly. My original plan was to just relax and enjoy the sights. But then I ran into Miss Hu Tao and Mr. Zhongli and, well, you know the rest. I suppose it was meant to be. It was a fated meeting indeed. Zhongli sure loves his lofty turns of phrase. 
But if you ask me, it's all thanks to that man who stopped to ask for directions. Oh? Who was it? It's someone you know. Wanna take a guess? What? How did you guess that on your first try? Very impressive, my friend. <sighs> your guessing game is spot on today. thought Nervalette would be the type to get lost. <laughs> I'm sure he didn't get lost. <laughs> Even I was able to find my way to this place without any trouble. He was already getting ready to leave by the time I arrived. He just wanted to ask someone about the quickest way to get back to Fontaine. Yep, that's exactly what he asked. This area is full of mountains and rivers. It's normal to not know the fastest route. So, were you the one that pointed him in the right direction, Hotel? Of course. I'm also a guide of sorts, you know. So naturally, I also have a great sense of direction. But, speaking of your friend... What about him? He doesn't get out much, does he? Ah, uh, no wonder. He was stiff as a board and way too polite. I would have never guessed he was here on vacation if you hadn't told me. All in all, he was only here for half a day. I'm pretty sure he is the only one who would consider that to be a vacation. Oh? This gentleman you speak of must keep a demanding schedule. He's, this guy really, John Lee really just wants to not see Nivellet. <laughs> I'm sure he does. You didn't see him, but he was dressed like he was about to attend some important meeting. It wasn't anything like what someone would wear on vacation. Is that so? Wait, you didn't see him, Jolie? Hmm. Unfortunately, no. Unfortunately, bro. At the time, it appeared that the I didn't see you and Miss Farina were having quite the productive conversation. I know matters of business can take much discussion, so I decided to fetch some tea for them. What a shame. That gentleman seemed like a sophisticated sort of guy. I actually think you two would have hit it off. <laughs> Is that so? <laughs> he, I feel like he... He knows. He knows. He knows. <laughs> That's a true fit. <laughs> to borrow Miss Farina's turn of phrase, perhaps it just wasn't meant to be. Well, with the traveler around, I'm sure you'll have a chance to get to know each other at some point. That's right. He's got more friends than he knows what to do with. Well, that's certainly true. Oh, that reminds me. If you get the chance, you should try and talk to Nervalette into loosening up a bit. Just tell him the Palais Mermonia isn't going to fall apart if he disappears for a few days. <laughs> he shouldn't keep himself cooped up all the time. Even clams open their shells to let in fresh water every once in a while, right? If he's really that much of a stickler for protocol, he can fill out a leave of absence request. He'd uh, have to approve it himself since he handles that sort of thing now, but you know what I mean. Seems like this gentleman is also in charge of something pretty important. Hey, yeah, uh, sounds like a pretty uptight sort of guy, all right. In my experience, a leader needs to be able to roll with the punches. That also includes knowing when and what to prioritize. It seems like your friend still has a lot of growing to do. If I remember correctly, he's already several thousands of years old. He's grow older. <laughs> you are quite right, Miss <laughs> Hutao. Oh? Traveler, Miss Farina, those two individuals over there appear to recognize you. Oh, it's Navia and Cloran. Hey, over here! What do you think about the... I don't know. Have you seen this area in, in Genshin yet? No. What do you think about it? What do you think about it? How, how, how it looks? This is, looks this is nice. the new area. I mean, this is part of anything specific. Looks like, a, looks like a village. It's, yeah, it's a village. 
Looks nice though. <laughs> yeah. No apologies necessary. Any friend of the traveler and Miss Farina is a friend of mine. Ah, straight to the point. I like it. So what do you think? So yeah, there's not much. I told you it wasn't be that's not a pro but I guess does it show anything about Farina's uh growth still? Maybe. Maybe it kinda enhances that she she's learning how to become herself without I I, I told you it's just I told it. I told you it's fun. I did I, I told you there's not much to the scene. Yeah, it's lighthearted. <laughs> funny it's funny stuff. It's funny, yeah. Um, um, so, hmm, what do you, what, um, what do you, I guess, okay, I think we're good with this. You know what, let me, I, I'm gonna, sh I, I don't, we don't have enough, to, I mean, we do have time, but I don't want to take this too long. I mean, Nuvalet's story is also amazing, about, mm -hmm. but I'm just gonna show you the final cutscene. Base, in, in short, in short, a um, Nivellets. There was a trial 500 years ago that basically led to led to a, a mermaid, a little mermaid girl, kill herself. Mm -hmm. And and basically, this the problem with this. I, it's the second my fa second favorite quest, but the problem is it chronologically. If you do it after, like Nivellets already found his purpose. It's like it's but, but and if you do it before, if you you can you can do it before doing the the final act of Fontaine. And then it's like, when is this happening? Because you, literally everything's about to fall apart. So it's like, how can this? We have time to do this, but it, it's 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 but it's 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 good either either way. But I think it's slightly better done before Act Five. But um, theme story mm -hmm. quest. Oh, it's raining. Paimon forgot to bring an umbrella! Come on, let's there hurry before it rains harder! Ugh, it's raining again? I've had enough of this weather. Ah, oh, there go my travel plans. Did you read the news this morning? Quick, put away everything on the clothesline. <sighs> when is this rain going to stop? <laughs> hydro Dragon, Hydro Dragon, don't cry! They're planning to reanimate the monster. We have to report this to the Chief Justice. The Fortress of Meripede. It's a good place for me. He want based oh, there's there's a lot like this there's a second like earlier on like her fa her father died oh god there's I don't yeah I don't know if it, condensing all this into one reaction is a lot but so but like her father her father died to eventually help solve a case because she knew that that death would eventually it's a it was a very like sacri like very like selfless sacrifice um but because he was wrongfully accused of something. Hmm. So oh, she's, she's, but they, they make it. Hmm. You could say he's the real symbol of Fontaine's justice. Watch him closely. He could be trouble. How can two completely different species possibly coexist? Who's been threatening Melisines? Show yourself! You will see much in the human world, from the delightful to the depressing. And one day, 
When you have dwelt among humanity long enough, you will be placed to bring judgment over all as a spokesperson for Fontaine's past. Good morning, Monsieur Nouvellet! The rainy season's almost over! <laughs> they both died. They both died. Oh. <laughs> I hope you find time to enjoy the sunny days ahead. It hits a lot harder if you know what actually happened, but it's sad. <laughs> it's just so. Mm. I, but that one line, I think you can take with, with everything else. You will come to as a symbol of Fontaine's past. Mm. What do you think about that? Wow, I, I was just... resonating with the, the with the agony. A symbol of Fontaine's past. What is? What is so then? How's that really back to, to the to the to the dragons and stuff? Like, so is he the true? Is he the true? Is it just like heaven is nothing and the the, the true ancient is? I mean, the true ancientness is the dragon. Uh, I don't, I don't think so though. I think the reality has never changed, right? The reality of where. Uh, the dragon used to live in the past and uh, how these people are living right now uh, they they share the same reality uh, mm -hmm. but but it's a change of time mm -hmm. right. and... I guess the question is what does it like how in regards to the dragons the dragons versus do is there sort of a diff a a, a a a are dragons in line with heaven? Are are dragons in line with heaven, or is there a sense that dragons are at war with heaven sometimes in China? Uh, I know that th there's the winged dragon, where um, they're they're basically forefronts for for uh, all kinds of wars. But I don't know much about them. I don't know anything about any. Are you talking, are you talking about the, you talking about, So I guess the question yeah. is. You know, okay. So what? What? What about? What about in the sense that? I guess though the sim is the, is the dragon sort of symbols of. I mean, so I mean, of I mean, what again? I mean being of like the of of the of the past. I mean, are there, aren't they symbols of the past? I mean, if we connect, especially to like Nouvelle to Asia, and I guess with a little bit you saw what you saw of a pep, like about mm -hmm. about I mean with, oh, with, well. the, with the Jubilee's quest about how 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 Asia like has to is like is like past but has to be sealed away. Oh well, if they were. If... If they were living in the past, and of course they kind of automatically become symbols of the past. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess mm -hmm. the like, the question is, um, okay, I, I, I you know what, I, I guess we're gonna need more information to get to to truly understand this whole Celestia thing. Um, mm -hmm. but but I guess wouldn't never let as the water dragon. Kind of be a stand-in if you think about China for Al Kuang, even though he doesn't act like him at all. Yeah, I don't think they're in any way similar. You don't think they're any? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think, I think, I think the, I think the Vidyardra from uh, yes. from Vidya, the Vidyardra are a little bit more similar. I mean, at least aesthetically, the Al mm. Kuang because they're water dragons. Yeah, and you know, there's Al Kuang has brothers. You know that, and she he he has two, three other brothers. Mm. Ogon is just the the uh, dragon lord of the East Ocean. Oh, there's uh, others. There's oceans of East of each one of them. Yeah, right. Okay, I think 
is there anything else I guess you want to say about all this, or is there anything else you want to be seen? I think I think we're almost we're, we're gone for two hours. So. Oh yeah, I think I think we should we should resume in another one. All right then. What? Well, this has been David Lee with Flash Field Video Game Philosophy. Any final words about all this? About 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 what all this means? Oh, there's a lot. So. Uh, find yourself. Don't escape from. Or don't just escape from the passive um, the freedom. Find your own active freedom. Find your Actualize own freedom. Actualize yourself. Yes. Don't uh, try 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 to be hopeful and uh, feel uh, justified and at ease for just being yourself. And and that and and you do that through playfulness. Yes, uh, through playfulness, through wonder, through humility, through courage, through. Uh, altruism through Wait. generosity. So you think that you you, you you think you found worth through through, through what was in here or all of this? Hmm? You think this was all worth it to to react to this? Yes, yes, of course. Mm-hmm. Yes, every time, every time. All right, yeah. We thought we never we that you wouldn't have anything for this, but but we you had a lot. <laughs> maybe, maybe not all that <laughs> was Chinese, but. Um, that's, yeah, that's right. good. but, but here, I mean, yeah, it's very character guardian from what little I know of it. So, mm-hmm. uh, all right. David Lewis, philosophy, video game philosophy. Peace.